Sometimes, in the rays of the morning dawn or evening twilight, you can see a very bright star, also called the Star of the Shepherd, and representing the brightest object in the sky after the sun and the moon, the planet Venus takes its name from the Roman goddess of love, beauty, and fertility. For a long time, and before the beginning of space flights, it was impossible to see the surface of our closest space neighbor. Behind the cloud cover of the veiled planet lies a mysterious world whose mysteries are still far from being solved. Dear Traveler, good morning. Today, we're going into space to discover our sister planet, Venus. Before flying away for our new adventure, think to like the video and subscribe to support the channel. Thanks to all, and enjoy the video. Even after the visit of the European satellite Venus Express, revealing the dense, cloudy atmosphere, the planet Venus became even more mysterious. The process that takes place in the atmosphere of Venus defy explanation. Because of the great similarity in mass and size, Venus is often called Earth's twin sister. However, as studies conducted by scientists show, these planets have little in common as the composition of the atmosphere and surface of the two planets differ considerably. Researchers think that the formation process of Venus is similar to that of the Earth, but something happened to Venus, a kind of catastrophe of which scientists still have no idea, after which it turned into hell. Moreover, Venus rotates not only slowly, but also incorrectly, in a different direction from all other planets of the solar system. This revealed detour and other mysteries amplify the passion to study this enigmatic planet. The planet Venus, this cloudy world that hides its face, is flooded by mysteries. Indeed, very little knowledge is confirmed by the researchers, the certainties replaced with hypotheses. The reason is mainly due to its dense atmosphere, representing an impassable barrier for the observers who cannot see the surface of Venus through the current telescopes. Venus is the second most distant planet from the Sun, but it is our closest neighbor. It is also the brightest object in the sky after the sun and the moon. Passing between the Earth and the sun once every 19 months, the planet approaches the Earth at a distance of 40 million kilometers, or 25 million miles. That is almost 15 million kilometers or 10 million miles closer than Mars. And since the rotation is opposite to that of the Earth, the sun on Venus rises in the west and sets in the east. The average distance to the sun is 108 million kilometers, or 67 million miles. For a terrestrial observer, the angular distance of Venus to the sun does not exceed 48 degrees, so that it is visible only during a certain time after the sunset, the evening star, or shortly before its rise, morning star. The duration of the year, i.e. the period during which the planet makes a complete revolution around the sun, is 225 terrestrial days, but the change of seasons on Venus is practically absent. Another strange thing about Earth's neighbor, the period of its revolution around its own axis practically coincides with the resonance period of the Earth-Venus system. In other words, this means that at the closest distance to the Earth, Venus always turns towards us on one side. The atmosphere of Venus is composed of 97% carbon dioxide, which retains heat in the lower layers of the atmosphere. As a result, the temperature of the planet's surface can reach 500 degrees Celsius, 
or 932 degrees Fahrenheit. Probe launches directly to the surface of the planet have established that under the dense atmospheric cover, there are no oceans, but a solid Earth. In this context, the interplanetary station Pioneer Venus, launched in 1978, allowed to compile the first map of the surface of our neighbor. It turned out that the mysterious planet is quite different from the others. First of all, Venus has the shape of an almost regular bowl, which has neither bulges in the equatorial region nor flattening in the polar regions. And this happens rarely. Our planet, for example, is not a ball, but an ellipsoid or a regular shape. Most of its surface is a fairly flat plateau, rising above the level of the Venusian seas, similar to those on the moon. There are real mountains on Venus. The highest point of the planet, named Maxwell Mons, rises to almost 11 kilometers, or almost seven miles high. Venus has no magnetic field due to the slow rotation around the axis, but the planet is so dense that it has an iron core similar to that of the Earth. The diameter of Venus is estimated to be between 12,300 and 12,700 kilometers, or 7,900 miles. Since this value is approximately equal to the diameter of the Earth, which is 12,756 kilometers, or 7,926 miles in diameter, Venus has been nicknamed our twin sister. However, several characteristics confirm that Venus cannot even be called a cousin of the Earth. On the other hand, various attempts have been made to measure the surface temperature of Venus. According to classical estimates based on its distance from the Sun, its surface temperature is between 50 degrees and 90 degrees Celsius, that is to say between 122 and 194 degrees Fahrenheit. However, in 1956, astrophysicists measured for the first time the radial luminosity of Venus. They reported then an astonishingly high temperature of 300 degrees Celsius, that is 572 degrees Fahrenheit, three times the boiling point of water. Later, after spacecraft flights, it turned out that the surface temperature of Venus is on average 465 degrees Celsius, almost 870 degrees Fahrenheit. A temperature hotter than that on the surface of Mercury, despite the fact that the latter is closer to the Sun. The question is, why is Venus so hot when the intensity of the solar rays that hit it is three times less than Mercury? The answer is the following. The carbon dioxide abundant on Venus is known for its capacity to retain heat, trapping the thermal radiation of the surface of the planet, transforming the planet into a giant greenhouse. In addition, the pressure of the atmosphere near the surface is 90 times higher than on Earth. Therefore, the potential future cosmonauts who would take route towards Venus will leave the ship not in spacesuits designed for the low pressure, but in hulls able to resist to the high pressure. This suit will probably look like a scuba diving suit. Our neighboring planet is like a glowing furnace. But then, what makes Venus specific compared to the other planets of the solar system? Until 1927, Venus was considered as a twin of the Earth. It was believed that behind the cloud cover of Venus, a kind of organic world was hidden on its surface, and that the atmosphere surrounding the planet resembled the air shell of the Earth. However, in 1927, the first disappointment came. Using the 100-inch telescope at the Mount Wilson Observatory in the United States, astrophysicist Ross took a series of images of Venus through various filters. He expected that the faint gray patches in Venus's atmosphere would be best seen in yellow, red, and infrared light. After all, these are the filters that photographers use to capture distant terrestrial landscapes. Nevertheless, the result was unexpected. According to Ross, the white spots are clouds, and the dark spots between them are breaks in the clouds. Of 
of course, only the lower layers of darker clouds were visible through these breaks, and the mysterious surface of Venus still remained closed. This means that the atmosphere of Venus is very different from that of the Earth. The air around us diffuses blue and violet rays. That's why our planet looks blue from the interstellar space. In the atmosphere of Venus, this law does not apply. This means that the sun rays are diffused differently than on Earth. During the 30 years which passed since the discovery of Ross, a certain number of astronomers tried to understand the optical properties of the atmosphere of Venus. Further detailed investigations have led to the conclusion that the scattering of light in the atmosphere of Venus is produced by relatively large solid particles, i.e. a kind of dust of unknown nature. Surprisingly, these data refer to the upper layers of the Venus atmosphere, which therefore, contrary to the corresponding layers of the terrestrial atmosphere, turned out to be very dusty. The spectral analysis applied to the atmosphere of Venus has so far brought little clarity to the solution of its enigmas. After all, the sun rays reflected by the continuous cloud cover of Venus allow us to know the composition of the upper layers of its atmosphere only. The nature of its lower layers, and even more of the surface of Venus, remains unknown. Nevertheless, the study of the spectrum of Venus led to important discoveries. In 1932, it was discovered that the atmosphere of Venus was exceptionally rich in carbon dioxide, almost 400 times more than in the entire atmosphere of Earth. But despite repeated attempts, neither oxygen nor water vapor was found. In the spectrograms obtained until now, there is not the slightest trace of the presence of these gases. In 1953, at the Crimean Astrophysical Observatory, astronomers detected the presence of ionized nitrogen. Therefore, besides a huge quantity of carbon dioxide, some nitrogen, and the almost total absence of water vapor and oxygen, this is all we know about the composition of the atmosphere of Venus. In 1956, the French astronomer Delvier published a work in which he tried to prove that the clouds of Venus are made of ammonium nitrite, which is formed under the action of electric discharges when nitrogen and water combine. However, if thunderstorms in the atmosphere of Venus are considered as possible, doubts arise then of the origin of the water vapor, whose presence on Venus is absolutely denied by the spectral analysis. But on the other hand, in the 1920s, astronomers noticed that the reflective properties of the clouds of Venus are very similar to the same property of the terrestrial clouds. On this basis, American astronomers proposed in 1952 the hypothesis that the surface of Venus is completely covered with an ocean of water. Indeed, if the clouds of Venus are made of water droplets and there is land on the surface, then, in this case, the chemical reaction between the wet rocks in contact with the atmosphere would absorb almost all the carbon dioxide. However, the facts indicate the opposite. There is an abundance of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere of Venus. These astronomers conclude that there is not a single piece of land on the surface of Venus. According to them, the ocean covers the entire surface of the planet and prevents the combination of gases and metals. Not particularly well soluble in water, the carbon dioxide remained in the atmosphere. The weakness of this hypothesis is obvious. It rests on the condition of the presence of water on Venus, because in the total absence of water, the carbon dioxide would also remain in the atmosphere in the same way as if there was an ocean of water covering the planet.
disagreeing with the fact that the opaque clouds of Venus's atmosphere are made of water vapor, the famous astronomer Hoyle starts from a different hypothesis. The smallest oil droplets suspended in the air could form clouds covering the whole planet. On this basis, he hypothesized that most of the surface of Venus is covered with oceans of oil, which, due to the high temperature of the planet, evaporates and covers the sky with oily clouds. But then, where does the oil come from? Hoyle suggests that during the cooling of the molten Venus, some chemical process caused the free hydrogen to combine with carbon and form a mixture of hydrocarbons before the hydrogen dissipated into space. So many contradictory hypotheses on the origin of the cloud cover of Venus obviously testify to the lack of knowledge. But how thick is the atmosphere cover of Venus? NASA's space probe Mariner 2 provided valuable information by determining that the cloud layer was 27 kilometers or 17 miles thick, extending about 70 kilometers from the surface, that is almost 43 miles in altitude. Since the thickness of the subcloud layer in Earth's atmosphere is no more than 20 to 25 kilometers or 15 miles high, Venus obviously has a denser atmosphere. One of the specific characteristics of Venus is the retrograde rotation, i.e. reverse around its own axis, which does not happen on any other planet except Uranus. Moreover, this rotation is strangely slow. In fact, Venus accomplishes a complete revolution about its axis in about 243 terrestrial days, and around the Sun in 225 days. Thus, a day on Venus lasts approximately two-thirds of an Earth year. If you lived on Venus, a day would be longer than a year. No body in the solar system can boast anything like this. Not the gas giants, not the terrestrial planets, not the irregularly shaped asteroids with known rotation characteristics. The reason for such a reduction in the rotational speed of Venus could be due to the transition to a synchronous rotation around its own axis, as it happens between the Earth and the Moon. But where is this massive satellite that caused such a slowdown of the rotation? For half a century, some scientists have noticed that in principle, Mercury could be suitable for this role. Indeed, a number of indirect indicators can show the previous location of Mercury in the same gravitational link with Venus. In this case, the slow rotation of this planet around its axis, the absence of other natural satellites on Venus, and a number of other intriguing circumstances find their explanation. Suppose that in the early stages of the development of the solar system, Venus and Mercury formed a close system, and it is possible that the rotation of Venus around the axis was synchronized with the rotation of Mercury around it. In the 70s of the last century, a large-scale analysis of the situation with the possible existence of such a satellite system in the past was performed, which showed that such an option was quite possible, but other theories will come to contradict this last one. It takes 243 Earth days for Venus to rotate on itself but only 225 days for the planet to rotate around the sun. Strangely, a day on Venus is thus longer than a year. Therefore, there are no seasons during the year, so all the days are similar. They all have the same duration. Astronomers have been trying for a long time to understand what is the reason for such a slow rotation of Venus around its axis. Some scientists believe that this may be due to the fact that in the distant past, Venus collided with a large asteroid that slowed down the planet and reversed its axis, forcing it to turn on itself in the wrong direction. This idea contradicts the data of space probes that studied Venus at different times. Their observations show that an unknown phenomenon continues to slow down the planet and that the duration of the day on it increases by 6-7 to seven minutes each Venusian day. 
such differences lead many scientists to believe that the main break of Venus's rotation was not an asteroid, but its supersonic atmosphere. According to proponents of this idea, the movement and friction of the atmosphere on the surface of the planet has slowed and continues to slow it down, which is reflected in the differences in the length of the day measured by the probes Magellan and Venus Express. Researchers at the McGill Space Institute in Canada have discovered the cause of these discrepancies in the probes' measurement by studying another curious Venus enigma, a mysterious 10,000 kilometer long or 6,200 mile long standing wave discovered by the Akatsuki probe immediately after its arrival at Venus's orbit in early 2016. Generally speaking, these standing waves originate in the Earth's atmosphere on long, high mountain ranges and have a relatively short lifespan. However, there are no large mountains on Venus and the wave found by the Japanese probe had not disappeared so far. This leads scientists to wonder how it could have occurred. To answer this question, researchers have shown by creating a computer model that eternal standing waves can appear during the day in four regions of Venus at once, where there are low altitudes and mountain ranges, and disappear after several Earth days at night. The Venusian atmosphere is very dense and heated to hellish temperatures. It turned out that this atmosphere rotates 60 times faster than the planet itself, which generates super powerful winds moving at a speed of 500 kilometers per hour or 310 miles per hour. To explain this super rotation of the atmosphere, researchers have hypothesized that there are strange dark structures in a very thin cloud layer that absorb half of all solar energy entering the planet. Scientists already know that part of the solar energy is consumed by sulfuric acid, but no other absorber has been identified to explain the remaining part of the absorbed energy. This is why they hypothesized that it is the energy lost in this thin cloud layer that somehow led to a super rotation of the atmosphere. This thick atmosphere, hiding all surface details from terrestrial observers and astronomers, led Venus to be called the planet of mysteries. Therefore, Venus was the first planet to which many space probes rushed in order to decipher the enigmas of our neighboring planet. Within the framework of a space race between the Soviet Union and the United States in the 60s and 70s, USSR showed more dedication for the conquest of Venus and launched a series of space probes known as the Venera program to study the planet Venus. The first Soviet spacecraft, Venera 1, launched to the planet Venus at the very beginning of the space era on February 12, 1961, transmitted to the Earth good photographs of Venus at a relatively close distance, but the pictures were taken outside the dense cloud layer of this planet. The surface details were not visible. Attempts of the spacecrafts to make a soft landing have long failed. All were crushed by the Venusian atmosphere and stopped transmitting information. Only the space probe Venera 7, launched on August 17, 1970 by the USSR and designed to support a very strong pressure, reached the objective successfully and managed to land on Venus. Thus, the temperature of the surface of the planet was measured the composition and the pressure of the atmosphere were determined, and the chemical composition of the surface was also studied.
This success further encouraged the Soviets to launch more spacecraft. Venera 8, launched on March 27, 1972, landed on the day side of the planet for the first time. In addition, Venera 9 and Venera 10, two twin probes launched in June 1975, transmitted for the first time to the Earth black and white panoramas of the surrounding area. Then, Venera 11 and Venera 12, launched in 1978, recorded up to 1,000 lightning discharges per minute on the surface of Venus. The probes Venera 13 and 14, launched in 1982, succeeded in transmitting the first color photographs of the surface and analyzed the chemical composition of the soil. The series continues with Venera 15 and Venera 16, which flew to the planet in 1983 and were very successful. They flew over the cloud layer of the planet and made radar surveys of Venus. In this mission, a quarter of the surface of the planet was then studied by radar. The precision was such that details of one to two kilometer length or one mile length and 50 meters height or 165 feet height were recorded. From 1985, the program Vega constitutes an extension of the program Venera. Indeed, the Soviet vehicles Vega 1 and Vega 2 were also important, from which balloon probes were released, drifting at an altitude of 54 kilometers above the planet. On the other side, the Americans started the exploration of Venus in 1962. After the destruction of the first mission, Mariner 1, NASA succeeded in a first overflight with the mission Mariner 2, which revealed a particularly awful world. Violent winds, acid atmosphere, very high temperatures, and atmospheric pressure on the surface with no protective magnetic field. In 1978, the American station Pioneer Venus 1 carried out the first radar mapping of the surface of the planet from orbit. Then, Pioneer Venus 2 succeeded in releasing, by parachute, four probes to study the atmosphere of the planet. From 1989 to 1994, the surface of Venus was studied by the American probe Magellan, which orbited the planet, making a revolution in three hours and nine minutes. The surface was photographed by a radar image. Therefore, an image of the surface was recreated with a minimum detail size of up to 250 meters. The height of the objects was measured with an accuracy of up to 30 meters, or more than 95 feet. Today, it is the most detailed map of the whole of Venus. The European conquest of Venus started too late. The European Space Agency launched in 2006 its space probe Venus Express, which led a mission entirely dedicated to the planet. Today, Akatsuki, the Japanese space probe that arrived in 2015, is the only one still active. After three decades of absence, NASA selects two missions whose launch towards Venus must intervene towards 2029. Veritas, a mission of radar cartography, and Da Vinci, an atmospheric probe, which must analyze the composition of the atmosphere of the planet. But how did the planet Venus form? Astronomers believe that the Earth and Venus were formed in the same region of the protoplanetary disk from the same material, but their development then took place in a different way. The Earth is enveloped in an atmosphere that contains about 20% oxygen. A moderate greenhouse effect and the presence of oceans make the conditions on the surface comfortable for life to flourish. On the contrary, Venus is surrounded by a shell of carbon dioxide. Its surface experiences extreme temperatures of nearly 500 degrees Celsius or 932 degrees Fahrenheit due to the massive greenhouse effect with a pressure 90 times higher than its terrestrial neighbor.
All the questions about the habitability of Venus are based on the question of the existence of liquid water on it. Indirectly, this possibility is highlighted by the unusual ratio of deuterium and hydrogen content, several times higher than on Earth. This is explained by the fact that the planet had very large oceans in the past, but that they evaporated and that the light hydrogen left the atmosphere as a result of the disassociation of water molecules. When did the oceans evaporate and why? The answer to these questions can only be given by a future mission to Venus, which will collect information on the volatile elements in the atmosphere and on the surface. To try to answer this question, some scientists proposed this hypothesis. While the interior of the planet was active, there was an ocean of molten magma, and consequently, the volcanoes on its surface poured lava. When in contact with water, this lava started to evaporate. On a larger scale, Venus has seen its oceans gradually evaporate. However, water vapor is a formidable greenhouse gas, allowing the sun's rays to heat the planet without letting the heat escape. Global warming accelerated. In a few hundred million years, its oceans completely evaporated. The water then concentrated in the highest levels of the atmosphere. Then, the ultraviolet rays of the sun broke the water molecules. The oxygen atoms fell back to the surface, while the lighter hydrogen atoms were lost in space. Arid, without plate tectonics nor regular volcanism, Venus became unable to evacuate its internal heat and during hundreds of millions of years, the pressure did not stop increasing. When this pressure reached its maximum, the planet released carbon dioxide into its atmosphere through volcanoes. This CO2 now replaces water as a greenhouse gas, and the volcanoes, much more numerous on Venus than on Earth, release it perpetually. In this way, carbon dioxide accumulates massively in the atmosphere. It is at this time that the planet underwent a global resurfacing. Today, it constitutes more than 97% of the atmosphere of Venus. The average temperature is 460 degrees Celsius or 860 degrees Fahrenheit, but it can go up to 520 degrees Celsius, that is to say, more than 970 degrees Fahrenheit. Sulfuric acid is another gas entering the composition of the atmosphere of Venus. It is this gas, very reflective, which makes Venus appear so bright in our sky, and sometimes this sulfuric acid falls down in the form of very corrosive rains. How did Venus and the Earth become so different? The mass of Venus is 0.81 that of the Earth. Its diameter is 0.96 that of the Earth. Its volume is 0.92 that of the Earth. Its average density is very close to that of the Earth. Its gravity is 0.9 that of the Earth. All these parameters underline that Venus is almost a copy of the Earth. This led the scientific community to nickname the neighboring planet as being the twin sister of the Earth. Therefore, it was natural to expect to find conditions similar to those of our planet, and especially life on Venus. But this pseudonym was totally eradicated as the discoveries were made. Studied closely, Venus is totally different from the Earth. The question we can ask ourselves is why Venus had a different fate from the Earth, despite their comparable astrophysical characteristics. At the initial stage of its existence, Venus looked very much like the Earth. Although there is no water on Venus today, the situation was different in the past. In 2009, with the help of the probe Venus Express, evidence was obtained that the atmosphere of Venus had lost a large amount of water due to solar radiation. However, 
This does not mean that an ocean never existed on Venus, because as simulations show, water was mainly contained in the atmosphere in the form of vapor, and was present in large quantities only at an early stage of the planet's existence. Thus, the primordial ocean of Venus could have existed for more than 2 billion years, that is to say, more than half of the history of the planet, after which it is possible to ask the question of the existence of life. However, something happened to Venus, a kind of catastrophe of which scientists still have no idea, after which it turned into hell. What causes the ashen light of Venus? With modern telescopes, it is relatively easy to detect a strange glow from the unlit part of the disk of Venus. Reminiscent of the ashen light of the moon, which has long been explained, the ashen light of the moon is caused by the Earth illuminating this part of the lunar surface. But what is it that illuminates the surface of Venus? After all, Venus has no satellites, and an attempt to find them have always ended in failure. This means that the ashen light of Venus must have a different nature. In the last century, there was no lack of hypotheses to try to explain this fact. Some even believed that the ashen light was an illumination of the intelligent inhabitants of Venus. However, it is not necessary to resort to the help of Venusians. Indeed, Venus is closer to the Sun than the Earth and thus the influence of the sun on its atmosphere is more significant. The luminosity of the night sky of Venus is 10 times superior to the luminosity of the night sky of the Earth. Venus is enveloped by a dense cloudy atmosphere. As the terrestrial clouds, those of Venus reflect a significant part of the solar rays which fall on them. This explains both the mysterious brightness of Venus and its bright white color. So, during the days when Venus is closest to the Earth, it is sometimes possible to observe a bright circle around the almost completely black disk of the planet. This illuminates the atmosphere of Venus, scattering the sun's rays that penetrate it. Is there a ghostly satellite of Venus? The Italian astronomer Cassini declared the discovery of a satellite of Venus in 1686. This discovery did not raise any concern. After all, Cassini had already gained fame by discovering the four moons of Saturn that really exist. He also pointed out that the size of the new satellite is about a quarter of the diameter of the planet, almost the same as our moon. Since Venus is always observed in the direction of the Sun, bright light interfered with observations of such a body except for short periods of time. But by the 18th century, most astronomers recognized that there was no satellite of Venus. Various explanations for the observational error have been proposed, including an illusion due to a random flash of sunlight scattered through the imperfect lenses of a telescope. Moreover, there is no image of the Venus satellite on photographic plates obtained by excellent telescopes of the 20th century. However, it is possible that there is a tiny satellite that cannot be seen in any telescope, especially in the presence of the blinding glare that surrounds the parent planet. The tiny Martian Deimos, only 8 kilometers in diameter or 5 miles in size, is barely accessible to modern giant telescopes, even when viewing Mars in the most convenient position facing the Sun. Any object the size of Deimos or smaller orbiting Venus would not have been detected from Earth. The search for the satellite of Venus will be continued by space probes sent from Earth. What happens in the atmosphere of Venus? The enigmatic atmosphere of Venus has been the centerpiece of the spacecraft exploration program during the last half of the last century. The most important aspects of the research were the chemical composition, the vertical structure, and the dynamics of the air environment. First of all, the atmosphere of Venus rotates 60 times faster than the planet itself, which generates super powerful winds moving at a speed of 500 kilometers per hour, 
or more than 310 miles per hour. Moreover, another mystery was unveiled by the Japanese probe Akatsuki. It is about an unusual structure in its atmosphere, a kind of cloud similar to the letter Y, already found in the atmosphere of Venus in the mid-60s of the last century. Studying images of the upper atmosphere of Venus, which the probe Akatsuki took during its revolution on its orbit, scientists discovered a giant wave 10,000 kilometers long, almost 6,200 miles long, which extended from one pole of the planet to the other and moved slowly through the layers of air at an altitude of 65 kilometers, or 40 miles in altitude. Scientists noticed this structure on the first day after the arrival of this probe. Under normal conditions, atmospheric gravity waves result from the interaction of large atmospheric fronts with mountain ranges and other large natural barriers. The problem is that there are no large mountains and other landforms on Venus capable of generating gravitational waves of this size, a record for the entire solar system. Consequently, either the data is erroneous or the winds and air masses near the surface of the planet where these waves come from behave differently than on Earth. On the other hand, the discovery of lightning in the atmosphere of Venus has been considered as the greatest success of the European spacecraft Venus Express. Until now, lightning has only been seen on Earth, Jupiter, and Saturn. In fact, the discharges themselves have never been seen. They were detected by the magnetic signals accompanying the process. The clouds of this planet meet all the conditions for the appearance of electric charges. Aerosol particles are abundant on the planet, and the whole cloud layer is crossed by strong movements. The accumulation of charges in these conditions must occur quickly, and therefore, between different layers of clouds, there will be lightning. This lightning is also special. It is born in clouds that are not made of water, but of sulfuric acid. Is there water on Venus? Generally speaking, the atmospheres of the terrestrial planets like Venus were formed by the release of volcanic gases from the depths during the differentiation of the matter at the stage of its fusion. Most of the volcanic gases are water vapor and carbon dioxide, which are in a volume ratio of five times for water vapor compared to carbon dioxide. Thus, Venus should have had a significant hydrosphere, quite comparable to that of the Earth, but where did the huge masses of water disappear from Venus? There is practically no water on Venus because the water vapor falling in the upper layers of the atmosphere has decomposed into hydrogen and oxygen under the action of the sunlight and the light hydrogen has left the planet. Since there is no water, the carbon dioxide released during volcanic eruptions is not discharged from the atmosphere by rainfall in the seas as on Earth and then accumulates in the atmosphere. The abundance of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere of Venus is thousands of times greater than the total amount in the Earth's atmosphere. Do the clouds hide an uninhabited surface or a flourishing life? Behind the cloud cover of Venus lies a mysterious world whose enigmas are still far from being solved. While observing Venus through red and yellow filters, an interesting fact suddenly appeared. It turns out that the maximum luminosity falls on the parts of the disk of Venus for which the angle of reflection of the sun rays is equal to the angle of their incidence. This means that on the surface of Venus, there are orange or reddish objects which strongly reflect the sun's rays. The Belarusian astronomer Tikhov tried to explain this fact. He believed that there was a rich flora on Venus However, the optical properties of Venusian plants must be very different from those of terrestrial plants. The surface of Venus is very hot. The temperature estimated at the time is probably close to 50 to 60 degrees Celsius or 140 degrees Fahrenheit. The proximity of Venus with the sun, the presence of a thick cloud cover creates on its surface, according to this researcher, a greenhouse climate. Consequently, the plants of Venus should not be green but of orange and reddish color. As a result, they reflect the orange and red rays, which brings them a high excess of heat. 
By the way, some algae living in Hotland Springs have a similar color. Red forests, orange meadows, what could be more fantastic? However, with the latest data on the surface temperature of Venus, estimated at 465 degrees Celsius, almost 870 degrees Fahrenheit, the only possible conclusion remains, there is no life on this planet. As far as we know, no carbon-based life forms can exist in such conditions. Most organic compounds would carbonize instantly. What is the nature of the surface activity on Venus? The hypotheses on the nature of the surface of this planet remained, until the second half of the last century, more or less fanciful. Indeed, one of the hypotheses described a gigantic ocean without limits, covering all the surface of the planet without exception. According to other hypotheses, the face of the planet was supposed to be a burnt desert, absolutely without water, and the famous clouds were mineral dust in a rapidly circulating atmosphere. Proponents of another point of view started from the fact that the conditions on Venus are close to those that existed on Earth during the Carboniferous period, a warm climate with an abundance of humidity. But at that time, astronomers simply lacked observational facts. It was not even possible to reliably determine the rotation period of Venus around its axis. Serious progress in the study of the neighboring planet was assured only with the use of radar and the beginning of flights to Venus by automatic spacecraft. The truth about Venus turned out to be more surprising than any fantasy. Venus is to some extent a living planet, but not in the biological sense, but in the geological sense. Various geological events are taking place on the surface of the planet. Containing plains and mountains, this surface is heterogeneous, complex, and does not change only because of meteorite impacts. In the plains, solidified basaltic lava flows up to 200 to 300 kilometers long, i.e. more than 180 miles long, are visible. On the surface of Venus, volcanic craters, calderas, faults, domes, meteorite craters, low ridge belts, unclear furrows, as well as strange ring structures that do not look like craters appear. The mountains of Venus are sometimes in the form of a plateau, sometimes in the form of a parquet, i.e. folds in two different directions, and sometimes in the form of parallel ridges. Such parallel ridges exist only on Earth, but they do not exist on the Moon and Mars. Of course, there are also volcanic and meteorite craters in the mountains of Venus, but in general, the surface of Venus, in comparison with other planets, has proved to be smoother. On the surface of Venus, rocks rich in potassium, uranium, and thorium were discovered, which, under terrestrial conditions, do not correspond to the composition of primary volcanic rocks but to secondary ones, having undergone an exogenous treatment. In other places, coarse gravel and dark boulders and other elements characteristic of basalts are found on the surface. Thus, the surface rocks of Venus were found to be the same as on the Moon, Mercury, and Mars, rocks of magmatic origin. The average age of the surface of Venus is about 1 billion years. Compared to the Earth's surface, it is much older, since the Earth is a much more living planet on a geological scale. Tectonically, the Earth is constantly changing, with some continents continually sinking and others rising. But the surface of Venus is much younger than that of Mercury, the Moon, and Mars. Therefore, there are far fewer meteorite craters on Venus than on Mercury, the Moon, and Mars. There are old meteorite craters almost destroyed and hardly visible on Venus. On the other hand, on Venus at altitudes of about 65 to 70 kilometers, or about 40 miles high, easterly winds blow constantly 
at a speed of 360 kilometers an hour, that is almost 220 miles per hour, creating hurricanes. These winds bring dirty yellowish clouds of concentrated sulfuric acid, because of which the planet is slightly striped. For example, a dark band is perceptible in the middle latitudes and another light band in the polar latitudes. In addition, one can sometimes distinguish polar caps made up of slightly lighter clouds. The great tectonic upheavals, the huge volcanoes and other landscapes, including ancient ones, mainly testify to the low activity of exogenous processes on the surface of Venus. And this is understandable because there's no liquid water on the surface of Venus, to which is associated the functioning of a vast complex of exogenous processes. Indeed, water in liquid phase, as well as in solid and gaseous phase, contributes to the development of a powerful climatic cycle, which has a decisive effect not only on the activity of exogenous processes, but also on the whole process of evolution of the surface of the planet. Has there ever been life on Venus? Our planet and Venus are at first sight very similar in size and mass. They have almost the same age, about 4.5 billion years. It seems that nothing prevented life to be born not only on Earth, but also on Venus. The possibility that life could exist on the surface of the present Venus is incredibly low. An average surface temperature of 400 degrees Celsius or 750 degrees Fahrenheit means that it is impossible to find liquid water there, and this heat would also destroy most organic molecules. In addition, pale yellow clouds float in the Mnuchin sky, which, as studies have shown, consists mainly of tiny droplets of sulfuric acid that, like terrestrial rains, fall on the surface of Venus, the only difference being that these rains are destructive to all living forms. But the upper atmosphere of Venus, which is milder, has temperatures low enough for water droplets to form and could therefore potentially be suitable for the formation of life. A person on Venus will only find the pressure and temperature conditions familiar to Earthlings at one altitude level in the troposphere, which is 55 kilometers from the planet's surface, or about 35 miles in altitude. But even here, the composition of the air is different, as its main component is carbon dioxide. In this context, some scientists consider it quite likely that life forms exist. Indeed, researchers have found carbonyl sulfide in the atmosphere of Venus. This gas is very difficult to produce inorganically, so it can be considered as an indirect sign of the activity of microorganisms. In addition, studies on Venus have shown that below 50 to 70 kilometers, that is below 40 miles of altitude, the ultraviolet radiation of the sun is almost imperceptible, as if the planet was surrounded by a kind of film which absorbs this part of the spectrum. Therefore, scientists have speculated that microbes could potentially live at high altitudes, using ultraviolet light for certain processes such as photosynthesis for land plants and some microorganisms. However, this environment has its own limitations, such as sulfuric acid clouds that would destroy any organic molecule not protected by a cell. For example, on Earth, molecules like DNA are quickly destroyed by acidic conditions, although some bacteria can survive in extremely acidic environments. Similarly, the constant fall of water droplets from Venus's atmosphere to its extremely hot surface would destroy any unprotected organic molecules in the droplets. Furthermore, with no mineral surfaces or grains in the Mnuchin atmosphere on which organic molecules could concentrate, the chemical elements necessary for life would be dispersed in a dilute atmosphere, making it incredibly difficult for life to form. With all this in mind, if some of the molecules found are indeed a sign of life on Venus, there are several explanations for how it could have formed. 
life may have formed on the surface of the planet when conditions were very different from those of today. Models suggest that the surface of early Venus was very similar to that of early Earth, with lakes and oceans of water and mild conditions. That was before an uncontrolled greenhouse effect turned the planet into the hell it is today. The hellish planet Venus may have had a perfectly habitable environment for two to three billion years after its formation, suggesting that life would have had plenty of time to emerge. Venus was able to maintain stable temperatures, ranging from a minimum of 20 degrees Celsius, that's 70 degrees Fahrenheit, to a maximum of 50 degrees Celsius, 120 degrees Fahrenheit, for about 3 billion years. If life formed during this time, it was able to adapt to spread through the clouds. Then, when intense climate change wiped out the oceans, killing all life on the surface, cloud microbes would have become the last outpost of life on Venus. Another possibility is that life in the atmosphere of Venus, if it exists, originated on Earth. It is known that the planets of our inner solar system have exchanged materials in the past. When meteorites crash into a planet, they can send rocks from that planet into space, where they sometimes cross the orbits of other planets. If this happened between Earth and Venus at some point, Earth's rocks may have contained microbial life that could have adapted to Venus's highly acidic clouds, like Earth's acid-resistant bacteria. Under stable climatic conditions, Venus would have been able to support liquid water, and in turn, eventually allow the emergence of life. In fact, if the planet had not experienced the resurfacing phenomenon, it might have remained habitable today. However, the resurfacing phenomenon triggered a series of incidents that caused a release, or outgassing, of carbon dioxide stored in the planet's rocks. As a result, the atmosphere of Venus became too dense and too hot for life to survive. Four point two billion years ago, shortly after the formation of the planet, Venus would have experienced a period of rapid cooling. During the evolution of the planet, the silicate rocks would have slowly absorbed the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and would have locked it in the crust of the planet. Seven hundred and fifteen million years ago, Venus's atmosphere was probably dominated by nitrogen, with traces of carbon dioxide and methane, much like Earth's today. Simulations suggest that these conditions could have remained stable until today, if a massive outgassing had not taken place. If the exact cause of this outgassing is still unknown, it is possible that it is related to the volcanic activity of the planet. When magma and molten rock rise to the surface of the planet, large quantities of carbon dioxide are released into the atmosphere. If the magma has solidified before reaching the surface, it would have created a barrier and prevented the gas from being reabsorbed. Similar events have occurred in the past on Earth. For example, the Siberian Trap is one of the largest known volcanic events of the last 500 million years. This event released toxic amounts of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere and caused a mass extinction. So life is hanging by a thread. Venus is by no means a hospitable world, as was once assumed. With its atmosphere of carbon dioxide, its clouds of sulfuric acid, and its terrible heat, it is totally unsuitable for humans. With the latest discoveries, some hopes have been dashed. After all, less than 20 years ago, many scientists considered Venus a more promising object for space research for human colonization than Mars. In the space of several decades, our views of Venus has changed from being similar to Earth. Now, we would rather call it an upside-down world, where a monstrous temperature and pressure, as well as a toxic atmosphere, clouds, and sulfuric acid rain, 
carved the landscape. Today, even the most basic information about this planet is either incomplete or missing. Truly exciting discoveries are yet to be made by future interplanetary probes to unravel the many mysteries of Venus.